Welcome to the online training series from 3CX. My name is Nicholas and I'll be your trainer for this module. Today we'll take you through the various settings which are available for an extension. By the end of this module we will have seen the various settings which are available and possible for the user extensions. We will go over the general settings of an extension. We will see what web meeting parameters can be configured to allow people to contact you via web meeting. We will talk about the forwarding rules, which will allow you to forward calls when you are not able to answer the calls at your desk. We will go through the voicemail parameters and how voicemail is managed. We will then see the BLF configuration and how you can assign BLFs to an extension very easily. We will then see the other various options which are available, such as restrictions, which can be applied to an extension. Let's start with the general settings of the extension. The general tab of the extension will contain the personal information of the user of the extension. This will include the mobile number of the user, which will be then used uh, when the mobile number is rung simultaneously with the extension. The outbound caller ID of the extension is the number which will be shown to anyone being called over the PSTN from this extension and can be defined in this section as well. A direct inward dial number is a number which is used to contact an extension within the PBX directly. This is covered in Module 1.4 Sebtrunks. You can also assign a DID directly to an extension from within the extension itself. This will automatically populate an inbound rule and point the calls to this extension. The 3CX web meeting can also be configured to allow people to contact extensions directly. By leveraging WebRTC technology and using a Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox browser, extensions can be contacted directly. Nothing else is needed from the caller. With web meeting, you can have multipoint video where one person can stream video and audio to multiple people, exactly like we do in our 3CX live webinars. You can also have the ability to share documents with other participants, allowing you to have a remote web conference with other people without the need for travel. You can also share your desktop so you can give a demonstration or show anything from your computer. Another functionality of 3CX Web Meeting is that it allows you to offer remote assistance to a caller. All they need to do is request this from within the meeting, without hassle and without needing to install any other application or use any extra licenses. To get 3CX Web Meeting to work with the extension, you will need to create an easy to remember descriptive URL name. For example, extension user. This will identify to the caller where they are calling and will also assign the URL to your extension. Choose the operating mode of Web Meeting that you require, whether to connect everyone who calls to a common room. This will require that the person being called is already in a web meeting room. Or you can opt to have a separate room for each requester, basically the callers calling from a web browser. You can now distribute this URL either through an email signature or on your business cards, making it easy for people to locate you. Whenever someone connects to the web meeting room of the extension, the user of the extension will be notified by chat message in their 36 client and also an email message. Receiving an email is particularly useful for people who do not have a 36 client and only use a desktop IP phone, but have access to a computer. Moving on to one of the oldest PBX functionalities, voicemail. 3CX provides one mailbox per extension. This is included in all licenses of 3CX. The voicemail system is multilingual, and you can choose a different language for each of the user's voicemail boxes. So, a French user can have a French mailbox prompt, and a German user can have a German mailbox prompt. A user can customize their greeting, allowing them to have a more personalized message. This can be recorded from the management console, from the voicemail tab, from the 3CX clients, or by logging into the voicemail menu from an IP phone. The email notifications can then be configured from this tab as well. This is dependent on an email address being configured for this extension. The different email notifications for the voicemail can be just an indication on the telephone 
via the message waiting indicator. An email notification alerting to the presence of a voicemail message. An email notification alerting to a voicemail with a voicemail audio file attached to the message. And finally, an email notification alerting to a voicemail with the voicemail audio file attached to the message and subsequently deleting the voicemail from the PBX. The last option can have a beneficial effect on the PBX as it will lower the backup size of 3CX as the voicemail messages are now offloaded to the mail server and mail clients. 3CX provides you with the ability to upload a pre-recorded message to be used as a replacement of the default voicemail greeting. The recordings will need to be in the supported audio format, which is a WAV file encoded in the following format. PCM, 8 kHz, 16-bit, mono. The voicemail greetings can also be recorded from one of the provision phones of the PBX. You will have the option to use the recorded greeting for all extension profiles or a different greeting per forwarding profile. This will allow you to define a more personalized message depending on the time of the day. Speaking of the different statuses of the PBX, there are five profiles which can be configured with different forwarding rules. These are available, away, do not disturb, custom one. Custom one is a replica of the available status. This, however, does not have the auto switching capabilities. And finally, custom two. This is a replica of the do not disturb status. Again, this does not have the auto switching capabilities. The custom one and custom two statuses are customizable per extension. You can change the name of these to suit the needs for each extension. The different forwarding rules will alter the call behavior for incoming calls to the configured extension. From within the forwarding rules, you can choose which voicemail greeting will apply to each of the profiles. We will now see the behavior a call will have when an extension is in the available or custom one profile status. A call routed directly to the extension will ring for a specified timeout, which is also configurable in the forwarding rules, and will then get forwarded to the configured destination. A call will immediately be redirected when the extension is busy or unregistered. From the available status of the extension's forwarding rules, you can also configure the option to accept multiple calls. Please note that this option does not apply to calls the extension receives via a ring group or a call queue. The forwarding rule configuration is only valid for direct calls to the extension. We will now see the behavior of an extension when it is in the away, do not disturb and custom to profile states. Extensions in these states will have their calls immediately forwarded. You will have the option to forward calls of internal origin and external origin differently. There are a variety of ways which the profiles of an extension can be changed. The first and easiest way is to use a 3CX client. A simple drop down box will allow you to select the forwarding profile you wish. You will then be able to configure the forwarding rules for each extension directly from the client as well, without the need to log in to the management console. You will also be able to change the profile state and edit your forwarding presets from the 3CX web client as well. You can use dial codes from any extension which is provisioned on the PBX to change its own status. The dial code to change the status of an extension is star 3 by default. You will then choose the relevant status. 0 corresponds to available, 1 corresponds to away, 2 corresponds to do not disturb, 3 corresponds to the custom profile status number 1, and 4 corresponds to the custom profile status number 2. 
If your IP phone has a Do Not Disturb button, you can activate the Do Not Disturb profile status using this button. Pressing it again will activate the available profile status. An extension can also switch its profile status automatically based on the time of the day. This will be covered more extensively in Module 2.4, Time-Based Scheduling. You can switch the profile status of an extension from the 36 Management Console as well, which will also allow you to change the status of any extension on the PBX depending on the access rights which you may have. The access is given from the Rights tab of the extension. Module 2.2, Extension Groups and Rights, covers the details of this particular tab. By configuring a relevant change status BLF for each profile, you can choose each status as and when needed just with the push of a button on your IP phone. Another final way of being able to change your profile state is from within the voicemail menu. Log into the voicemail menu and in the options you will hear the option which will allow you to change your profile status. Forwarding rules are not triggered in some cases. Whenever a call is received through a queue or ring group, the forwarding rules will not be followed if any of the following parameters are in place. The destination is configured as end call, that is to terminate the call, and if the call forwards to any other auto-answering extension, for example, another queue or digital receptionists, or it forwards to any other user or system extension. In all these cases, the extension will ring normally and will not get forwarded based on the forwarding rules. We mentioned earlier about the BLF keys, which you can configure to change the status of an extension. BLF stands for Busy Lamp Field. This basically allows you to monitor the call state of an extension. A BLF on an IP phone will not monitor the profile status of an extension, just the call state. The different call states which are possible are idle. The monitored extension is idle and not in a call. Ringing. The monitored extension is in the ringing state. In call, the monitored extension is in an active call at the moment. BLF keys can also be used for a variety of other functions. Apart from monitoring the extension, you can press a BLF which is in the ringing state to pick up a ringing call of the extension which you are monitoring. Also, transferring a call to the monitored extension is possible with just a press of the BLF button. You can also dial this extension just by pressing the BLF button as well. A BLF key can also be programmed to perform a variety of other functionalities. In addition to monitoring an extension, you can program a BLF key in the following ways. As mentioned a few slides back, you can program a BLF to change the profile status of an extension. Each profile will have its own BLF key. When an extension is a member of a queue, it can log in and log out of the queues. An agent will be able to press a BLF to log into a queue and another BLF to log out of a queue. There are some cases where you might not want to monitor an extension, but will just need a speed dial button to dial this extension quickly and easily. Configuring a speed dial button will achieve this. The PBX also provides the capability to create a custom speed dial, where you will be able to add speed dial buttons for numbers which are outside of the corporation. For example, a home phone number, a supplier or customer. BLF keys can also be configured as shared parking slots, allowing you to park calls. When a call is parked in the shared parking slots, it will light up the BLF key on all extensions configured with this shared parking slot configured. Allowing the person who parked the call or any other extension with the same shared parking slot configured to see the park call and pick it up. And recently we have introduced the option to configure a BLF as a line key. In addition to the default line keys which we did provide, we now give you the opportunity to define more or less line keys. If 3CX is using a Pro or Enterprise Edition license key, 
users can configure their own BLF keys without the intervention of the PBX administrator. This is achieved through the 3.6 client for Windows. Expand the BLF side panel from the menu of the client. This is activated by clicking the three blue dots in the top right. You will now see the BLF panel with any BLFs which may already be configured shown. Right click a BLF key and click configure. Configure the BLF with whatever BLF feature is required. This configuration will apply to all the devices which are provisioned on that extension, including logged in hot disk extensions. 3.6 clients will automatically and immediately have these available to them. IP phones will either need to be reprovisioned or will apply with a delay of up to 40, 28, 24 hours when they automatically reprovision. From the extensions option tab, you can impose restrictions on the extension to define some functionality and security. When an extensions user goes on extended leave, you can disable this extension so it will not be used maliciously. This is especially useful in open plan offices. Alternatively, you may not want to disable the extension entirely, but only external calls which may incur a charge. This will allow the extension to make calls to the internal extensions, queues, ring groups, or digital receptionists, but not to external numbers. Another blocking functionality is being able to pin protect the extension. This will require the extension to call the pin protect digital receptionist, authenticate with the voicemail pin number, and then be able to make a call within a predefined timeout. More about this is mentioned in module 3.4, digital receptionists. When an extension is only required to provision and connect to the PBX from within the local LAN, there is no need for it to be allowed to connect from outside the network. The disallow use of extension outside the LAN options will prevent any attempts to provision this extension from outside the LAN. Please note that this will not prevent any 3CX clients or session border controller connected extensions from connecting. This is only for remote stun extensions. You can, however, block SBC extensions or 3CX clients from connecting by enabling the block remote tunnel connections option. Another blocking functionality which can be configured on the extension is the option to block outbound calls from this extension outside office hours. This is quite handy again in an open plan environment where you can make calls during the working day without restriction. But when the phone is not in use at night, outgoing calls will be restricted. This is helpful as it can prevent malicious use by anyone not authorized when the phone and desk are not being used. Call recordings on the PBX are done at an extension level, and in the Options tab, you can enable the recordings for the extension. An extension user can also receive an email notification for any missed calls to their extension. This assumes that a valid email address is configured on the extension and that the SMTP server is set up correctly and has been tested. 3CX provides the ability to hide the extension from the company phone book, so the contact information of the extension is not shown within the company phone book. This will not prevent the extension from showing in the presence screen. This is defined from the rights tab of the extension and is covered in module 2.2, extension groups and rights. The ability to log in the extensions to a hot desk device is also done from this tab. When a call is forwarded to an external location, the person answering has the option to filter the calls being accepted based on the caller's caller ID, with a functionality we call rebound. However, sometimes if the person calls from an unknown number, having the caller ID read out to you is pretty unintuitive. To get over this, you can request the caller's name so that you can filter the person before answering. Thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you at another one of our video training modules. You may also want to join us in our live webinars where we also demonstrate the material learned in this module.
Log on to our website for more details. Thank you and goodbye.